Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you very much. And a very, very big hello to Wisconsin. It's uh, great to be back. You know, I, before I start, they say that Wisconsin is probably the toughest of the swing states to win. I don't think so at all. I don't think so. I don't think so. We have got the biggest crowds. They've never seen crowds like this. This is unbelievable, actually. You know, I could be anywhere right now. I could be beautiful beaches. I could be all over the world, and I'd rather be right here. What's more beautiful? We are going to win the greatest election in history. In history. And it's incredible to be back in this beautiful state with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots, which is what you are just 30 days from now. We're going to win the state of Wisconsin. We're going to defeat Kamala Harris. And we are going to make America great again. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. And quickly. We're going to do it quickly. And when we win, it will be considered the greatest political victory in American history. You know that, right? I saw that. You know, I saw that. I've never really said it that way. I've said it a lot of different ways, but not that way. And I saw one of these uh, Democrat, I guess, congressmen in this case. He said, you know, if he does this, because we're leading in all the polls, we're leading everywhere. Leading in Wisconsin, too, by the way, which is very important. You see, because this is the ultimate poll. When you get this many people, this is the ultimate poll. But, you know, they, uh, they had this Congress, and he said, you know, if he does this, it's going to be like the greatest political win in the history of our country. And I said, wow, that's great. I love that. We love that, Troy, don't we? So it will be, it will be incredible. And I think we're going to have something that's going to be uh, amazing. The world is going to be watching. And we're 30 days away, 30 days away. So you have to get it. But, you know, we had an incredible evening. Last night in Butler, Pennsylvania, it was a beautiful evening. It was a very different kind of an evening. It was a tribute to a very brave firefighter, you know, Corey. He was a real Trumper. Corey was a Trumper. He was a MAGA guy. He was an America First guy. He had the whole deal going with the outfits, the hats. He had everything. He was great, and his whole family is great. But he really, look at it the way I look at it, he sacrificed his life in an attack 12 weeks ago. And you have to look at what happened last night. We had over 100,000 people show up in beautiful Little Butler. It's Little Butler. But beautiful Butler, Pennsylvania, we had a crowd. And, you know, this is a hell of a crowd, too, I have to tell you. It's happening all over. But we had, we had 100,000 people. And there was love. And I had a, a fantastic Christopher. I had a great opera singer. And he went up and he sang Ave Maria. You saw that? We had, we had a... Uh, short moment of silence, and then the bells rang. And they said, where do we get bells? I said, why don't we just take them off the Cathedral of Notre Dame? I said, those are good bells. And you actually have tapes. So we said, let's use them. Maybe nobody's going to find out. We had these magnificent bells ring. And then Christopher got up, one of the best opera singers I've ever heard. And he got up and sang Ave Maria during this moment of silence. It was an unbelievable evening. And we have something to show you the kind of crowd we had last night. It was really something special. So let's put it up if we can.
Brown picture. That was unbelievable. They used the wrong picture. It's the same picture, but they have the two side things. It's so stupid. But that's what it, you know, we have that every once in a while, right? We have that. That seldom happens. But uh, you, got, you got the gist of it. It was an unbelievable crowd, so unbelievable. And there was a lot of love in the room. And uh, it was really an honor of somebody. So that was a different kind of an evening. I'll tell you, this is, that was an evening to celebrate somebody who had died. And this is an evening to, uh, a day to celebrate just really uh, greatness. Because we're going to have, we're going to have something so special happen. We've never seen anything like it. You can go around any place in the country now, and you have signs all over the place, Trump and Trump. And by the way, how good did J.D. Vance do the other night? Right? That was a good pick. That was a good pick. That was a very good pick. But from the very beginning of this journey, I've been on a mission to rescue our nation from a failed and corrupt political establishment and corrupt people, frankly. They are the most corrupt people. That's the most corrupt group I've ever seen, ever. Nobody's ever seen a group like that. And to give you back the country you believe in, the country that you were born in, and the country that you deserve. And in that mission, I will never quit, I will never bend, I will never break, and I will never yield. I'm like these guys over here from Texas. And like I really believe all of us, we say, uh, not even in the face of death itself, I will not. This is so important what we're doing. We're saving our country. This country is in big trouble. We're a failing nation. We are a failing nation. We're a nation in decline. We're a nation in distress. And we're going to get it fixed very quickly. We, but you know what? If we have to go with another four years of these people, these people, and she's worse, and she's worse than Biden, in my opinion. First of all, I think Biden is actually far more intelligent, if you can believe that. Can you believe? I think he's more intelligent than she is. Ay, ay, ay. But I'm putting everything on the line to fight for you, and we're going to fight for you, and we're all going to win together. It's going to be the greatest win in the history of our country. I believe that. I believe it. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm only asking you to do one thing. We don't even need your money. Keep your money. Just go out and vote. Get everybody involved. Go and get them involved. Kamala Harris, you know, I tell people, I say, you can't use the name Harris. Nobody knows who the hell she is. You say Harris. You say, if you say Harris, they say, who's Harris? I don't know what it is. The name doesn't catch on. So we, we'll use the word Kamala. Kamala. But Kamala is a disastrous, radical, and grossly incompetent vice president who has betrayed our country and the people she swore an oath to serve. She was our border czar. And you know what? She doesn't want to call that. So let's not call her that. She was in charge of the border, OK? It's the worst border in the history of the world. They announced last week that 13,099 murderers were released during their term. They then tried to say, well, it wasn't really good. And somebody released it, and we don't know who, but it was a patriot that released it, because she got up and tried to say that when she's in, she's going to do this, she's going to do that. Why the hell didn't she do it four years ago, right? But she threw open our border, destroyed the middle class, and now, as our citizens are suffering from catastrophic hurricane, I mean, this hurricane has been a bad one. Kamala Harris has left them stranded. They have, this is the worst response to a storm or a catastrophe or a hurricane that we've ever seen, ever. Probably worse than Katrina, and that's hard to beat, right? Worse than Katrina. They didn't do too good a job either, but this is worse. 
and she sends their money to foreign nations. He and she, they send hundreds of billions of dollars. They send hundreds of billions of dollars to foreign nations. And you know what they're giving our people? 750 bucks. Seven hundred. Here, take it. This is the worst response, I think. Troy, what do you think? The worst? Never saw one like this. This guy, Troy, is good, but I'm going to bring him up. This guy has got a brother who might be better. I don't know. <laughs> he might be. He's damn good. I'll tell you what a group we have up here. The Patriots, you know, the patriotism, all we want to do is take our country back and fix it. We want to fix our country. Right? That's all we want to do. Is that asking so much? Time and time again, Kamala has proven that she cannot be trusted and she can't do the job. First of all, she's grossly incompetent. I don't care. She doesn't do interviews. They said, why doesn't she do? Because she is incompetent. She can't answer the question. She can't answer anything. And I don't know, you know, they want to do 60 Minutes. Remember, I had it out with them last time because they had the laptop from hell, and they said it was from Russia. I said, no, it was from Hunter. I turned out to be right. Remember Leslie Stahl? She's another real heavyweight. Leslie Stahl, we got into like an argument on 60 Minutes, and I turned out to be right. But to the best of my knowledge, I have not received an apology. That was a big deal at the time. She said, how dare you? You shouldn't say that. This was from Russia. I said, it wasn't from Russia. It was from Hunter. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. So we're waiting for an apology. They want to do it again. I, I'll do it again, but they got to apologize. Don't you think I should make them apologize? For <laughs> yeah. If you want a president who inundates your towns with illegal alien criminals, and by the way, every town and every little city and every big city, frankly, are petrified. Even if they haven't arrived yet, they will be, because you're talking about 21 million people at least just during this three-and-a-half-year period. If you want someone who steals your wealth and abandons your family when the floods waters rise, those flood waters rise, and they were gone, they haven't seen anybody from the federal government yet. The federal government isn't there. And by the way, how good a guy is Elon Musk? Right? You saw him last time. How good. I mean, that guy, I didn't know anything about it. I get a call from a really good person in North Carolina. They said, the people, there's no communication. They said, do you know a man named Elon Musk? I said, yeah, I do, actually. He endorsed me very strongly, and we love him. He's a, he's a smart cookie. A little different, too. He's a little different. <laughs> but he is one smart cookie. He sends the rocket ships up. The first time I ever saw it, the engines coming down. I said, what was that? Well, we'd like to be able to save the engines. It makes a lot of sense, but I never saw anything like that. This guy's unbelievable. So what happens is, uh, he was there last night, by the way. He was, he, he got the biggest hand you've ever seen. He, uh, people love him. But they said, do you know Elon Musk? So he didn't know. And uh, I said, yeah, I do. Why, what do you need? And he said, they have something called Starlink. Starlink. He said, we have no communication in North Carolina. People are dying. Like 500 people are missing. It's a disaster. The federal government is doing, the White House is doing nothing. They've abandoned us. And you know, it's largely a Republican area. So some people say they did it for that reason. I don't even think they're that bad, but they probably, maybe they are. But they want Starlink. So I said, uh, whatever it is, let's sell. I call Elon. I say, and you can't get it. It's really popular. It's very hard to get. But they need it, and they need big doses of it, like fast. And I'm calling Elon. I said, Elon, in North Carolina and parts of Georgia, and the governor is doing a very good job, by the way, in Georgia, I have to say, a very good job. But in parts of Georgia, in parts of Georgia and in real big parts of North Carolina, they need something called Starlink. I don't know what the hell it is, but, and you don't have to tell me because I don't want to waste a lot of time, but would you be able to get it? And we talked on the phone for a couple of minutes. And during my conversation with him, I got a call from North Carolina thanking me for getting Starlink. I said, I said, how the hell did you do that? You're talking to me. You didn't have time. 
He said, well, I have a system. I think he's doing No, I mean, he approved it while he was talking to me. Is that crazy? Crazy. We have got to be with and we've got to protect our brilliant people, because we don't have too many of them. We need our brilliant people protected. And uh, Kamala is not one of them, I can tell. But if you want a president who will do whatever it takes to protect you, who will never forsake you, and who will never rest in the defense of our nation, and I'll tell you, never, I'm just thinking, it's, it's a beautiful phrase, but we will never rest. We're never going to do anything that will be other than protect the people of our country and our nation. Then you better vote for a gentleman named Donald J. Trump. Have you ever heard of him? Have you ever, ever heard of him? Have you ever heard of him? Thank you. Well, I'm going to always get the job done in America and for America. And uh, one thing we always will do, and we've got to do now, because for 50 years we haven't done it, we will always put America first. It's time for us to put America first. We did it four years ago, I can tell you. We were energy independent four years ago. Can you believe it? With the lowest energy prices, lowest, everything was the best. And that's why they compare this with what it was and people like us. We had the greatest economy in history, history of our country, and we did well. And by the way, I'm just looking as far as the eye can see beyond, long beyond the fake news. That's a lot of cameras back there. But long beyond the fake news. Look at all the, you, you can't even see. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Unbelievable, thank you. You know, I always like to move the fake news way back. And I figure they have cameras that can do it, but that's the maximum they can do. If they say that's the, I, I don't think it is, but they say that's the max, because I would have moved them way the hell to the back. So up to me. Because they block the view. They're blocking the view of these people. They block the view of all those people. But you know, this is like a poll. And you have 50,000 people here, 50,000 people. and. You know, that is a lot. If we get just the people here to vote, I think we win. <laughs> I think we win. With your vote in this election, we can seal our borders. We can reclaim our sovereignty, stop inflation, raise your incomes, rebuild our devastated communities, and launch a new golden age of American prosperity and pride. That's what we're going to do. It's going to be American prosperity and American pride. But with four more years of Kamala Harris, your long nightmare is just beginning. Remember the word. Somebody said, give me one word to describe your opponent, Kamala Harris. You know what I said? Incompetent. I said, she's incompetent. She shouldn't be in the position. In all fairness, I'm no fan of his. But we had him totally beat. We had the debate. He was gone. We were 20, 21 points up. We were and they walked in, and they did a coup. It was a coup of a guy that got 14 million votes. She got none. She was the first one out. You know, she ran against him. He won. He got 14 million votes. He won. There were 22 people. She was the first one out. She never made it to a great place called Iowa. We love Iowa, the farmers. We love Iowa. But she never made it. She never made it to Iowa. And uh, then all of a sudden, I find we're running against her. I, so they had 12 people plus her, and they wanted to be politically correct, and they picked her. And I don't know. I actually think if it keeps going like this, like we're doing, because they said she'd have a six-week honeymoon, and she did. She had a little bit of a honeymoon period. You know, they, they went from the fake news, went from calling her horrible, the worst vice president, a total disaster, couldn't speak, couldn't do anything, to being wonderful. She's wonderful. As soon the fake news. You know, they have the fake news as their partner, and we have a little news, but we are, our news is peanut. And I never understood 
why they'd want this, why the fake news would want it, other than they hate our country, because I can't understand. Why do they want open borders? Why do they want sex change operations for people that are too young to even think about it? Why do they want men playing in women's sports, you know? Because we actually are now the party of common sense. I think that's what I like calling us now, right? Party of common sense. But with her in office, inflation will soar. You see where she's working on inflation? No, where she has no idea what she's talking about. She's working on, I will work on inflation. Why didn't you do it again four years ago? Why didn't you do it again? It, you know, my theme with her is, why didn't you do it again? But why didn't you do it then? Why didn't you do it four years ago? Why wouldn't you have done this stuff? You want to do this stuff. They want open borders. So now they gave it a little bit of a closure, so the numbers look a little bit better than they did. The damage is done. We got 21 million people in here. We have 647,000 criminals released from jails and insane asylums, released into our country. The damage is done. But you say, how could you be talking about the future? The damage is done. They've got to be talking about getting these criminals immediately out of our country. We have to talk about that, and we're going to do it, and we're going to do it rapidly. Why didn't she do it four years ago? The economy will crash, your borders will be permanently erased, your towns will be ravaged, and our country will never, ever be able to recover from this disaster. We're going to recover fast. But if you go four more years, you may never recover. In fact, I will say, some people say it, I, I think it's very severe, but I can understand it. Some people say you'll never have an election again. This would be your last election. And I can see it. Remember, I used to say we'll be Venezuela on steroids. And that's sort of what's happening. We're Venezuela on steroids. The only, and we're buying a lot of Venezuela oil. How about this? We foreclosed on his old, broken little plane, the dictator, the head. We foreclosed on his plane, but we buy billions of dollars of oil. Can you imagine that? It should be the opposite way, really, shouldn't it? You know? We, for, we took his plane away, but we give him billions of dollars a month in oil. Can you believe it? We're buying oil from Venezuela, and we have more liquid gold under our feet than any other country in the world, and it's good. And they don't have oil, they have tar. They have tar. You have to melt it. And you know where it gets melted? In a refinery. You know where? In Houston, Texas. So if you're environmentalist, all that stuff, I'm going to talk to you about this with Texas. All that stuff is going up into We do it. It's the only refinery in the world that can do it, because basically they have a lot of tar, and you have to melt it, and it's a dirty process. We have the sweetest, lightest, most beautiful stuff. It's, uh, it's, it's not even believable. The only way to avoid this miserable fate for America is if Wisconsin and the entire Midwest turn, and I mean turn out in record numbers. We need, we need, we need, and I hate to use this word because they should have never done it with respect to COVID, they should have never done it. But for this, we need a mandate. They shouldn't have done it with COVID. Everybody that did it should be ashamed of themselves, what they did. But we need a mandate in the vote, and we're going to get it. I think we're going to have — I actually think we're going to have numbers like has maybe never been seen before. You know, last time in 2020, we got more votes by far, by millions, than any sitting president in the history of the United States. Think of it. It's unbelievable. Think of the difference. We wouldn't have had Russia going into Ukraine and killing millions of people. Millions of people have died in that war, much worse than you even hear. But that wouldn't have happened. It would have never happened. I talked to Putin about it a lot. It was the apple of his eye. He would have never, ever done it. Wouldn't have done it. On top of that, the oil prices went up so high that that he had — I mean, he was making a lot of money doing it. It would have never happened. You wouldn't have had October 7th with Israel, the attack on Israel. You wouldn't have had inflation. You wouldn't have had the Afghanistan most 
most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, and we lost 13 great soldiers. Nobody ever talks about the 40 soldiers that were decimated, so badly hurt. And we gave them $85 billion worth of the best equipment anywhere in the world. How stupid. And they moved out the military first. You're supposed to move out the military last, not first. And for 18 months, I spoke to Abdul. He's still the leader of the Taliban. I spoke to him. I said, Abdul, don't do it. But we didn't have one soldier killed in 18 months in Afghanistan. They were killing them like crazy under, under a man named Barack Hussein Obama. Remember Rush Limbaugh? Remember Rush Limbaugh? Rush Limbaugh would go, Barack Hussein Obama. <laughs> we miss Rush. We need Rush. Oh, we miss Rush. But they were killing him, a lot of soldiers. And I said, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. We didn't have one soldier in 18 months killed until we had that tragedy of a, of a day and a moment, the most embarrassing moment in history. And actually, Russia, I think, went in because they saw how stupid we were with Millie and these guys that didn't know what the hell they were doing. We have great generals, by the way, but not the guys that you see on television. And you have to tell Kamala Harris that We've had enough. We've had enough of you. You're a horrible vice president. You destroyed San Francisco as the DA. You destroyed California as the attorney general. You're not going to destroy the United States of America. Kamala, you're fired. Get out of here. Fired. We're not going to let him do it, Troy. We're not going to let her destroy our country. That dummy. Did you see where the teleprompter went off yesterday? She didn't know what the hell. My teleprompter, I don't even use it. That's why I don't actually use it too much. But, you know, when you do this stuff a lot, teleprompters break. She had a bad moment yesterday, it broke, right? And she kept saying the same number over and over. I said, what's wrong with her? And maybe it, maybe it didn't break. I don't know. She said it, bro. But when you do this stuff, as we say professionally, you better be, you better, because I've lost it many times. I had one in Ohio for Bernie Marino, who's doing pretty good up there. He's running for the Senate, just like Eric is doing great here. He's running for the Senate. <laughs> Eric Hovde. Doing good. Good man. He's a good man. Got to vote for him. But when you do it as much, you know, it breaks. I, I had what I was in Ohio. I think it was the windiest day ever in the history of Ohio. It was like Scotland. And the wind was blowing at a level that I've never seen here in this part of the world. And the teleprompters were like sails. Wah. Wah. And then they blew off the stage. They blew. And we had 50,000 people. It was a great day because he took the lead right after that, a big, a big, beautiful lead in the primary. But it was sort of an amazing experience. But you lose them all the time. And you have to be able to have a mind where you can actually speak without a teleprompter. And isn't it nice to have a president that can speak without a teleprompter? Isn't that, isn't that nice? It's sort of nice. But you lose them all the time. But she was in La La Land. She was gone, and then it kicked in. She kept saying the same sentence over and over again, over and over. I said, what the hell is going on? And then the teleprompter saved her. It kicked in, but it didn't kick in soon enough, let me tell you. <laughs> Early voting in Wisconsin is underway now, so if you have an absentee ballot, return it right away as soon as you can. You can also vote in person using an absentee ballot starting up. October 22nd. And whatever you do, you have to get your friends, get them all out. You know, you have a lot of people out there that don't vote, that love us, but they don't vote. You know who doesn't vote much? Rifle owners. We are Second Amendment people. But NRA gave us their total support. We have support from every group. But NRA gave us complete and total endorsement. And during that, I realized that, because I've always gotten it from the NRA, that they're really, they've been very nice to me, I'll tell you. But they did tell me that 
people that own guns and rifles don't vote relatively, like a very small percentage, like 15 percent. If you would vote, nobody could beat us. I'll tell you another one that don't vote. I love these people. Evangelicals, evangelical, evangelical Christians. The Christian community doesn't vote as much as they should. They go to church. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to church and we're going to get out and vote. But the evangelicals don't vote that much. And if they did vote, we could never lose an election. You couldn't lose, you know? So. So I have to be careful with this. I said once about a month ago, you only have to vote this one time. And after that, everything will be good. And the fake news said, See, he wants to be a dictator and take over the country. No, no, that's not what I said. We got to fix the country, got to make sure, and then the country will be great, and we're going to have hopefully some great person, whether it's JD or somebody else. And when the great Sean Hannity asked me a question, and I jokingly said, he said, Okay, let's get this one. You don't want to be a dictator, do you? I said, Sean, I only want to be a dictator for one day, and I'm going to close the borders and drill, baby, drill. But after that, I never want to be a dictator, right? <laughs> so the fake news took that answer, and they said, Sean, I want to be a dictator. Click, cut. So he said, Sean, I want to be a dictator. And they go, he wants to be a dictator. They cut the rest of the. These are the worst people. These are the worst. They said he's a threat to democracy. He wants to be a dictator. No, you know the threat to democracy are when you put incompetent people in charge of our country. That's a real threat to democracy. Starting on day one of my new administration, we will end inflation and we will make America affordable again because the prices are too high. The prices are too high. But if crazy Kamala is reelected, one of the first acts will be, and she said this, is to massively raise taxes on American families. You know, I've never seen all my life, I've loved politics, but I've always been on the other side, like writing checks to politicians, right? But so I really understand, I like it and all, but I've never seen somebody that openly campaigns on the fact that they're going to raise taxes. It's always going to be, like when Troy is back in Texas, he's always screaming, I will lower taxes, lower taxes. We always talk, we're going to lower taxes. We want to lower taxes. That's what our game. This group is going to raise your taxes like by 78% or something, and they campaign on it. I've, this is the craziest campaign I've ever been involved in. I had one guy beat, and I had to be, so I have to beat two people instead of one. I spent $150 million beating Sleepy Joe Biden who I admire greatly for one thing. You know, I always have a hard time sleeping because I toss and turn. And honestly, I do. I think about the country. I'm tossing and turning and tossing because I want to, you know, like a lot of people do. You have businesses, you toss and turn. It's okay. It's like become your way of life, right? We think about whatever we're doing. In my case, I'm thinking about China. I'm thinking about Russia. I'm thinking about lots of things. And by the way, the enemy from within the crazy lunatics that we have, the fascists, the Marxists, the communists, the people that we have that are actually running the country, not her. She's not running it, and Biden's not running it either, and you all know that. Those people are more dangerous, the enemy from within, than Russia and China and other people. Because if you have a smart president, you'll be able to handle them very well. But Kamala Harris, lion Kamala, is the, called the tax queen because she loves taxes. So maybe just watch this video. Thank you. Joe Biden and I are about to get rid of that tax bill. Calling for a bold repeal of President Trump's tax cuts. If Kamala Harris was elected president, there are many different tax policies which could cripple the economy. But the first thing she wants to do is allow these Trump tax cuts to expire. Even the New York Times admits that 85% of the middle class got a tax cut. Americans will face a hike. The Tax Foundation finding that a couple with two kids making $165,000 a year 
would have to pay over $2,400 more in taxes. And on day one, I will repeal that tax bill. Joe Biden and I are about to work to get rid of that tax cut. Joe and I are about to get rid of that tax bill. Joe Biden and I are about to get rid of that tax cut. Everything's on a 70 to 80 percent tax rate. I think that's fantastic. We've got to increase the corporate tax rate. Part of that is going to be about repealing that tax bill that they just passed. And also looking at estate taxes are going to have to go up. We will tax capital gains. But we're going to have to raise corporate taxes. Taxing unrealized gains just doesn't seem fair in any sense of the word. When the value of your home goes up, you pay higher taxes even if you don't sell your home. Your value of your home never moves the way the stock moves to say, we're going to tax what you don't have. That's a sore point, and it's a big deal. Is that something you think she firmly believes in? I think it's part of the proposals of the campaign. Under my plan, there will also be a, a carbon fee. There has to be some connection between um, the fee and bad behaviors, and there has to be, and, and that we have to monitor whether it's going to be passed on to consumers. But I'm going to tell you that should never be the reason not to, to, to actually put a fee, and that's in particular a carbon fee. How about the tax on unrealized gain? That one hasn't even been tried. That's a communist tax that hasn't been very successful, I tell you. It's, uh, think of it, they want to have a capital gain on unrealized gains. Think of what they're saying. You're going to pay a tax on something you haven't made. Now, these people, these are stupid people, would be driven into a depression like 1929-style depression. For years, Americans have watched as our country has been stripped of our jobs, stripped of our wealth and seen our companies being sold off to foreign countries. And by the way, I would not approve the U.S. steel deal to Japan. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. One of the greatest companies in the world. 60 years ago, was one of the greatest countries in the world. And we have to help it. We have to make it better. We have to be able to make steel. It could happen. You have a war. And when you have a war, you need things like army tanks and chips and lots of things that are made of steel. We don't want to get our steel from China. We don't want to get our steel. You know, I put a tremendous tariff because China was dumping a lot of bad steel here. Bad steel. Dirty, I call it dirty steel, not good steel. But I put a big tax. You know, I took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. No other president took in 10 cents. And I saved our steel industry by doing it. So I'm very proud of that. But under my plan, for the U.S. economy, American workers will no longer be worried about losing their jobs to foreign nations. Instead, foreign nations will be worried about losing their jobs to America because we're taking them back. We're going to bring those companies back. And we can do it with intelligent taxing. We can do it. We can do it like they've been doing to us for years. It's very simple. And we have the place that people want to be. And it's not going to be that way always. If we keep going like this, nobody's going to want to be here. German car companies can become American car companies. We can beat China in electronic production. Manufacturers that have left us will come roaring back. They'll kind of come roaring back. This thing has gotten such great reviews. I'm going to explain it. It's so simple. And some people said, wow, that's unbelievable what you're doing. Where did you get that idea? Uh, I'm going to go a little forward. I got the idea from if you want tax benefits, you have to build in America. If you don't want tax benefits, you don't have to do. The United States will give you the lowest taxes, the lowest energy costs. We have the most energy. We have more than Saudi Arabia. We have more than Russia. We're going to give you the lowest energy, the lowest regulatory burdens, and free access to the best and biggest market anywhere on the planet. But only if you make your product here in America and hire American workers for the job. And we don't do that. You know, there's this crazy person that you just watched she gives you a tax benefit if you make your product in another country. These people, it's so, it's so crazy. And if these companies don't take the deal, they'll pay a very substantial tariff when they send their products made in another country to us. And we will use the hundreds and billions. We, we will, it's really trillions, okay? 
But we're going to use the hundreds of billions of tariff dollars to benefit American citizens and to pay off debt, because we have to start paying off debt. And this new American industry will create millions of jobs, massively raise wages for American workers, and make the United States a manufacturing powerhouse like it has never been before. We were good, but we, we can be better than that if we do this. And it's so simple. And essentially, we're doing to them what they've done to us. They do it. It's so — and some of the worst abusers — they I call them abusers of our country — are our so-called allies. What they do to us on trade is just incredible. It's not going to happen any longer. I guarantee you it's not. You know, they respected your president four years ago. Now they look at this guy, and now they have somebody that's dumber than he is coming along. It's not good. It's not good. And we can't play games. I'd like to be nice. I want to be nice. I think I'm a nice person. But we can't take games. We can't — if we lose this election, this country is finished. I really believe it. This country is finished. By contrast, the tax queen is demanding a 33 percent tax hike on all domestic production. You know what's going to happen? All of those companies, even small businesses. But all of those companies are going to leave our shores. Everybody wants the companies. That's what they want. It's very competitive. She even has a plan to tax the unrealized. And we're going to talk about that, but it's, it's the craziest thing. Never been done, could never be successful. What it will do is bring you into a wonderful age of our country. 1929 depression. Everybody's going to leave. So. If a company succeeds, it must give up much of its value to the government of the United States. Everyone's going to leave. They're going to take their companies. They're going to get out. You know, it used to be you moved from state to state, and you'd negotiate. Now people are moving their companies to other countries. And we're getting killed, by the way, by Mexico. Mexico is killing us. So just be ready, because if I'm president, we're going to take that back from Mexico. They're not treating us right. They're building massive car plants. They're building some of the biggest auto plants, car manufacturing plants, anywhere in the world. And then they think they're going to build them cheap and sell them into our country and destroy Michigan and all these wonderful states. So it's not going to happen. We'll put a tariff of 200 percent on if we have to. We're not going to let it happen. We're not letting those cars come into the United States and destroy our car industry. You won't have anything left. You've already lost 60 percent of it. You've lost so much over the years. Not when I was there. Kamala Harris already cost the average family $29,000 with rampant inflation. The inflation that we've suffered for the last four years now, it's almost four years, uh, it's coming back. And look, we're not going to let this happen either. And the price, you know, they talk about more than anything else, groceries. Who would think groceries? It's so bad to go to the supermarket. Who would think it could happen? Her plan would raise taxes on 4.1 trillion. We're going to be raising them by 4.1 trillion dollars in taxes, hiking the families' taxes by 2,600 to 3,200 dollars a year, reducing our GDP by 2 percent, lowering wages by 1.2, and killing 786,000 full-time jobs. And I don't know if you know, last month we lost we lost 26,000 manufacturing jobs in the U.S., 26,000, because people want to get the hell out of here. You know, the market goes up every time I get a good poll number, and we have had great ones now. The market's starting to go up, and they get the credit for it. Isn't that a terrible thing? I said, do me a favor, just sort of — every time we — literally, we have some of the biggest analysts, the best analysts in the world. They're saying every time Trump has good publicity, the market goes up. Kamala is right now shutting down power plants all across the country, causing electricity prices to destroy. They are soaring. You see what's going on with electricity by more than 100 percent soaring and driving us into third world status by attacking the entire fossil fuel industry. Just so you know, you need fossil fuel to fire up those big, massive plants. The wind isn't going to do it. It's wonderful. Isn't that nice? Look at the little windmill. It's so beautiful. We need fossil fuel. You know, they tried it in Germany. Angola was thrown out after about a year. And now they're building a coal plant a week. 
I don't like flies. Get out of here, fly. Never been, never been a big fan of flies. You don't mind my bringing that up, do you? Anyway, this is a very aggressive sucker, though. This, this one. This one in particular is very aggressive. Like, I'm going to be aggressive for our country. You can probably say that. If this continues, Wisconsin manufacturing will be dead. You'll be absolutely dead. And, you know, I got you the biggest shipbuilding contract in the country in my last year, right? He's nodding yes, right? The biggest. And they've done a great job, but the biggest. I took a lot of heat. A lot of people are not in love with me for doing it. But I got it for Wisconsin, and you know that. Actually, you know it from Texas, because they wanted it, too. I won't say that too loud. But everybody wanted it, and I got it for Wisconsin. And they're doing a great job. They're doing a great job. But the horrific nightmare for American workers ends the day that I take the oath of office. It will end on that day. It's going to be over. We're going to have, we're going to have a country that's going to turn around very fast. The centerpiece of my plan for a manufacturing renaissance will be a 15% made in America corporate tax rate, cutting the business tax from 21 to 15. Okay. So I took it from 39 to 21 with the help of your great congressman over here, Troy, Troy Nels. <laughs> Fought hard. But we took it from 20, 39 to 21. Everyone said that's impossible. We got it approved by Congress. Can you believe that? And now what we're doing, and that makes us pretty competitive, but not that, because there are many countries. And again, remember, the countries there are sort of our opponents on trade. They're actually our opponents, and sometimes it's pretty vicious opponents on trade. But we took it down to 21 from 39. Now I'm taking it from 21 to 15, but only for those who make their product in America, right? Pretty simple. And, you know, I got a call from some of the smartest geniuses on Wall Street. They said, where did you ever think of that idea? It sounds simple, right? It's like the paper clip. They make the paper clip, and everyone's saying, why didn't I think of that? But we will protect those companies moving into America. And this is just as important, because you can't have them, and then everybody comes and steals your company, steals your people, steals their, your, gives you, dumps your product. And so this is important, and all of our existing companies are going to be protected with stiff tariffs placed on companies that don't move in. If they don't move in, they're going to have to pay tariffs, because we're not going to let them hurt the companies that do move in. And the only way they can get out of paying those tariffs is to build their plants and factories here in the USA. Anywhere in the USA, in Wisconsin would be nice, but anywhere in the USA, we will also cut energy and electricity prices in half, 50 percent within 12 months, including for all people and families, not just companies. So, ready? Your energy bill will be cut from January 20th, will be cut by 50 percent in 12 months, okay? 5-0, 50%. And I hate to say it, with your, with your Democrat governor, you have some of the highest electricity prices and highest energy costs is just about at the top in Wisconsin. You have some of the highest costs, so. You have a, you have a lousy, you do have a lousy governor. It's like. I do hear just one thing about him. He doesn't work hard. That's the only thing I hear about him. How does he do it? He doesn't even show up. That's no good. No, he's a lousy governor. I guess they'll work on that next cycle, but he's not a good, not a good governor. We will quickly double our electric capacity. You know, if you do AI, you know, AI is the new big thing, whatever. But AI is the big thing. But AI, to do it successfully and to be the leader, because China is already starting and very big, we need double the electricity. For whatever reason, they need massive electricity. We need double the electricity that we have right now. Who would think that? So what we have right now, you need doubled, and we will get that done. We'll have to do something with respect to the environment, because under the environmental impact statements right now, it would take you 20 years to build anything having to do with electric or anything, any form of energy. 
we're going to do an expedited plan where it'll be done in a matter of like weeks or months. We got to get it. We've got to get it done. We cannot do these uh, impact statements that take years and years and years. People are working on a project. They start off as young men and women. And by the time they're old and retired, the project gets rejected. They actually get rejected. They work on it for 20, 25 years, and then it gets rejected. We're not going to have that because it's really a way of hurting us. I mean, they actually, it's a way of hurting us. We're not going to do it. We need tremendous electric here so that people like Elon and other people that are into this whole world of this, it's a new world, but it's going to be a very big world, a very fascinating world, probably a very dangerous world. AI has got some little tricks to it that we have to be very careful with, but they need massive electricity, and we're going to provide it. We're going to be able to compete with anybody. We'll, we'll be the leader. We're going to be the leader in virtually every field. We're going to be the leader in automobile manufacturing. Think of that. And it'll happen quickly. And I have pledged to remove 10 old and burdensome regulations, and I did this. We had more regulatory cuts when I was president than any president in history by three times. But we're going to get rid of burdensome regulations. We're taking them off the books, and it's 10 for one. We put in one, we get rid of 10. And it had a great impact. Great impact. But I had the most success uh, in history in cutting regulations. I gave you two things. I gave you the biggest tax cut in history, and I gave you the biggest regulation cut in history. And that, those two things gave us the greatest economy in the history of our country. We had that just a short time ago. So if you want your incomes to plummet, your net worth to collapse, your tax bills to soar, and your jobs to disappear, then vote for Kamala, because she'll do, she'll do very well. But if you want Washington bureaucrats to keep their greedy hands off of your money and out of your pockets, then you have to vote for Trump. We're going to get this thing done for us. We'll work together and vote for him. So the other thing we're going to do is we're going to terminate Kamala's insane electric vehicle mandate where every car — every car has to be, in a very short number of years, all electric. They don't go far. And by the way, I love electric cars. I think they're great. But they're for a certain market. And we want also gasoline-powered cars, and we want hybrids. And the new thing is hydrogen cars. You heard me talking about it. Hydrogen cars is the new thing. It's got one problem. It's got one problem. Uh, it's very violent. If it blows up, they won't — you are not recognizable. Please come down and identify your husband. Uh, there's a blood stain on the tree. Can you identify it? No, it's very violent. Did you know that? It's, it's dangerous. If it, uh, if it blows up, you're screwed, okay? So I'm going to pass on that particular car. They say it has a wonderful future, but the one problem is it's, it's — uh, really dangerous when it blows, okay? It wipes out people on the street. I mean, it's terrible. I wouldn't — I would actually say they shouldn't even go too far with that one, don't you think? I don't know. I think we shouldn't go too far. But hydrogen is a big new deal. The other thing we're going to end is the Green News scam. It's the greatest scam in history. You know, we had the cleanest air and the cleanest water in the history, meaning the recorded history of our country. We had clean air. That's what I want. I want clean, beautiful water, and I want clean air. And after that, I want jobs, and I want success for our country, right? My pro-worker policies are one of the major reasons why I've been endorsed by the rank-and-file membership of the Teamsters. Can you believe that? We got 60 percent of the Teamster members in Wisconsin. Any Teamsters here? Thank you. Any Teamsters? Yes. Thank you very much. That's very nice, because typically Democrats get — and we won nationwide. We won 60 percent of the Teamsters vote, and uh, we also won 100 percent of the Fraternal Order of Police, the largest, 400,000. And I do believe that from sheriffs, and from law enforcement,
and from Border Patrol and from ICE, from anything having to do with uh, law and order, I think we're at 100 percent. We've got, like, everybody, which tells you something, you know, which tells you they don't like people that were in charge of defund the police. She was in charge of defund the police. Anybody, she's a radical left. She's further left than crazy Bernie Sanders, okay? That's pretty fun. No, she's considered worse than Pocahontas, worse than — she's worse than Pocahontas. She's worse than Bernie Sanders. How the hell do you people — are you — is anybody — okay, is there anybody here that's going to vote for Lion Kamala? Please raise your hand. Please raise your — actually, I should say, don't raise your hand. It would be very dangerous. We don't want to see anybody get hurt. Please don't raise your hand. As we bring back our jobs, we will also restore America's borders. With four more years of Kamala, every Wisconsin small town and Midwestern — I mean, the Midwestern cities are just devastated by this — will be flooded with illegal migrants from the most dangerous places on Earth, and Wisconsin will not be Wisconsin any longer. No state will be. The country won't be the U.S. any longer. It's very simple. Your state will be a dumping ground for people that have committed murder, violent crimes, drugs, jail. They're in jails. And that's what's happening. We have 21 million people, as borders are. They came in, and they came in from prisons and jails and mental institutions and insane asylums. And a level of terrorism and a level of terrorists that we've never seen. You know, I never talked about it when I was president. We didn't have one terror attack in four years. Think of it. Not one. Think of it. Not one. And I had a lot of people say, sir, it's time you should say that. I said, I don't want to say it until I'm finished. I don't want to say it. I didn't want to say it. But we didn't have one terrorist attack in four years. One week ago, I was in the beautiful town of Prairie du Chien. Have you heard of it? Prairie du Chien. In western Wisconsin, where, by the way, we had 60,000 people show up. That's the good news. But Biden, Sleepy Joe, didn't give us the number of people required, so we ended up speaking in front of a relatively small group. I hope those people — we're going to go back, and we're going to take care of that situation. They didn't give us the people necessary, so we spoke in front of a rather tiny little portion of them. They stayed around. They were great. But we had 60,000 people there, and I think you're getting close to that right here, too. It's pretty amazing. But Prairie du Chien and last month, police arrested an illegal alien member of a savage Venezuelan prison gang. Not a nice person. This vile monster who had prior charges for strangulation was arrested. He liked strangling people. Other than that, he was quite a nice person. No, his thing was he liked strangling people, was arrested for holding a mother and daughter captive against their will and sexually assaulting them again and again and again. This animal crossed Kamala's wide open border, just walked in. Nobody asked anything about him. They knew nothing about him. He was arrested and released in the sanctuary city of Minneapolis, where you have one of the worst vice presidents. Can you imagine that clown? What J.D. did to him? How about that guy? And he was immediately released by Minnesota and set loose to prey on more victims, and he did earlier this year in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Fond du Lac. Nice. I love these names. I wish they could give me a little easier name. <laughs> it just uh, — they told me that's the way you pronounce it, so I hope I got it right. But an illegal alien released by Kamala Harris was arrested for tying up and blindfolding a 12-year-old — you know this, you read it, it's a big story — a 12-year-old girl at a back of a van and viciously assaulting her in so many ways sexually. Today, I make you this promise. I will liberate Wisconsin and our entire nation from this mass migration invasion of murderers, child predators, drug dealers, gang members.
and thugs. It'll be liberated. It'll liberate. It's incredible. It would be just incredible. Thank you. Thank you. It's so sad we even have to talk about it. Who would even think we have to talk about it, really? And I think, you know, they say uh, the biggest uh, topic is the economy, the biggest topic is inflation, and then the third topic is the border. I really don't agree. I think the biggest topic might be the border, because I just think, you know, we'll solve the problems, and we're going to, you know, we're going to drill, we're going to get your energy down, the energy is going to bring everything else down, we're going to get the interest rates down. I was 2 percent in my administration, now they're 10 percent and you can't get any money. That's killing the American dream for young people. So we're going to get it down. But to me, you know, I, I know they do all these polls, and the polls say it's the economy, and the polls say very strongly it's inflation, and I can understand it a little bit. To me, it's the, the horrible people that we're allowing into our country that are destroying our country. And it's the hardest problem to solve, too. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big, tremendous problem. And that they could do this to our country, putting, again, 13,000 murderers, many of them murdering many people. Many of them, or a certain number of them, a fixed number, but in death row, they were going to be executed. And rather than executing, they said, let's go, we'll dump them into America. They're stupid there. They'll accept them. 13,099 people, drug dealers at a level that nobody's ever seen, terrorists from different countries all over the world, you know, this is no longer South America. This is all over the world. And they come from the Congo. The Congo in Africa, I don't know what it is, but large numbers of people are coming in from the Congo. And you know where they're coming from? The jails of the Congo. What's happening is these dictators are taking their jails, and they're emptying their jails into the United States. And crime in Venezuela is down 72%. Crime all over the world is down now because they're putting their criminals, they're putting their jail people, they're putting their drug dealers, they're bringing them into the United States of America, and they're dumping them. And they say, don't come back, and if you do come back, we're going to kill you. And we're stuck with them. We're not going to be stuck with them. We're going to be bringing them back, and we're going to shove them right down their throat. They should have never been allowed to be here. Unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Thank you. And we're not allowing these people to invade us, to conquer us. I mean, did you see what they're doing in Colorado, where you have a very weak governor? He's very weak. He's a liberal guy and very weak. And they've attacked Aurora, Venezuela gangs, young guys. They have weapons like our military has, the equivalent of our military. And they've taken over buildings in, in Aurora, Colorado. And the governor, is he doesn't know what to do because he wants to be nice because he's stupid. And he doesn't really know what to do. They need, I think they need a new governor. On day one of my new administration, the invasion of savage criminals ends. And on that same day, the largest deportation in American history begins. Can it begin? The largest deportation. And I'm not happy to say that. I'm not happy. It should have not been necessary. This, should, this has all happened over the last almost four years now. It shouldn't be necessary. We had the safest border in the history of our country. Oh, my favorite chart in history. Bring down that chart, please. I don't know if you have it. If you have it, bring it down. I love it. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for immigration. I wouldn't be here, Troy. I looked over at that chart and ping. If I didn't, you know, it's amazing. If I, that chart is very, I kiss it every night. I take it to bed with me every single night. No, I turned over to look at the chart. At the beginning, not the end, it's always on the left, it's never on the right. And just one day it was on the right. And if I didn't turn my head, somebody would be here. But I guarantee you, they'd have a hell of a lot less people. You'd have about three people in the front. 
But for all of that, but take a look at that. When you look at that chart, see the arrow at the bottom? That's the lowest number of immigration we've ever had in our country in recorded history. And look what these stupid people allowed to happen to our country. That was the day I left office, right there. That was the day, the red arrow. Look what happened. And all they had to do is leave what I had. I had a policy, remain in Mexico. You have to remain in Mexico until you get checked out. And not a lot of people got checked out. Some very bad people were coming, and they wouldn't get in. They couldn't get in. We built hundreds of miles of wall, and boy, did it work. And then they could have thrown up. We had 200 miles that we were still putting up. We were 500 and some odd miles of wall, a lot of wall, and it was working. We used the Mexican government. They paid a fortune. The Mexican government gave us 28,000 soldiers to protect our border because I said, they're coming through your country. You're going to do it. They said, no, I'm not. To the president of Mexico, who I got along with, great. But he said, I won't do that. I said, yes, you will. You're going to do it. They're coming through your country, and you're going to do it. They said, no, we won't do that, president. We won't do it. I said, yes, you will. And I said, I guarantee you, you will. And they started saying, what the hell does this guy have in mind? And they said, if you don't do it, I'm going to put 100% tariffs on your cars and all other things you send into the United States, and we'll make so much money, we'll be able to hire all the security we want. And they said, Mr. President, we've decided that we would love to do it. We would love to do it. They paid a big price. Mexico paid a lot of money toward our wall, let me tell you. They gave us great security. They had a lot of soldiers, thousands and thousands of soldiers. I said, free of charge. I'm not reimbursed. I didn't reimburse them. And then when these clowns took up, think of it, remain in Mexico. Catch and release. So we had catch and release in the United States. We made a minor change. We catch and release in Mexico. That's a big difference. Would you say that's a difference? That's a big difference. So we did all these things, but that was the lowest number in the history of our country, and all they had to do was leave it. Guys like Tom, Holman, Brandon, Judd, you have people now at the Border Patrol that are phenomenal, phenomenal, and they want to do the job, and they're not being allowed to do the job. And then they made this minor change a couple of months ago to try and make the numbers look better. But what they didn't tell you is they're still flying thousands of people overhead, and that's not reported. And they have an app. And you know who the app for is the cartel heads. They call an app so that we can tell them where to drop the criminals. Can you believe it? They have an app. So they have the plane and they have the app. And that's not included in the numbers. Just like 818,000 phony job numbers, I call them fraudulent numbers, 818,000 job numbers, they defrauded. They said there were 818,000 jobs. And they reported it. And they were going to unreport it and correct it right after the election. But we had a great whistleblower who rang it out on them. 818,000 jobs were reported fraudulently to make their numbers look better. These are bad people that we're dealing with. So you have to get out and you have to vote. You also need to vote for the next senator. And I mentioned him, and he's great. He's strong. He's powerful. If he wants, he can come up, or he can just sit the hell down, because you're going to vote for him anyway. I got it. But Eric Hovde is running to defeat radical left Tammy Baldwin. You want to come up fast? Come on, Eric. We got to get this guy elected. Come on. You want to come up? Uh, come on up. Come on up. Now he's a little nervous about coming up. He said, that was the worst invitation I've ever had. Come on up, Eric. He's great. No, he just said, do you want me up? That was the worst invitation I've ever had. Come here. Say a few words. I always love being here with President Trump. Let's give him a round of applause. Trump, I was talking to the folks beforehand. In business, results matter. You know, you got to get a deal done. You got to make money. You've built one of the most successful careers, biggest developer. I've spent my life in the private sector building businesses. 
We're going to get this country moving. <laughs> President Trump gave you wage increases of 7.7%, a record for America. That's results. The world had no wars. That's results. Our communities were safe because he had the border closed and he stood by law enforcement. That is results. Senator Baldwin, Kamala Harris, they're career politicians that have never accomplished anything and have failed at everything. So all of you, go work hard, go grab every friend, colleague, neighbor, and let's restore this great country and get President Trump and me to Washington. Let's go, folks! Thank you very much, Eric. He's a great guy. He's a very, very successful guy, strong. It's what you need. Tammy Baldwin does nothing. She does nothing for you. Nothing. And we're also delighted to be joined by a friend of mine, a really, he's a great senator, and he's, uh, he's done a really good job, and he loves your state. Senator Ron Johnson. Ron. We have plenty of time. It's a Sunday, right? Thank you, Mr. President. Thank all of you for coming. On behalf of the hundreds and literally thousands of Wisconsinites that I've talked to over the last few months that want to convey to you their appreciation, oftentimes with tears in their eyes. They want to thank you for your courage, for your tenacity, for your love of this country, for, for your willingness. They realize you didn't have to do this. But you're willing to do it because, like them, you love this country fervently. So on behalf of all those Wisconsinites, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to thank you for your new alliance with Bobby Kennedy. Not, not, only, not only is that important so we are actually go going to address the huge problem of chronic health and children's health, but you are right about the enemy within. They are dividing us on purpose. They are destroying this nation. And by allying with Bobby Kennedy, you are setting the example, the two of you, Set the differences aside, focus on an area of agreement on a big problem, and in doing so, you are demonstrating exactly how this nation can come together, how we heal and unify America. So God bless you, God protect you, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great, Ron. Thank you. It was a great job. I'd like to, if I could, just for a second. So you have a young, uh, brilliant congressman, and he's on a committee, and it's a very important committee, and he's studying fraud. And the fraud 
within the Democrat Party and what they're doing in terms of campaign contributions. And it's a tremendous scandal. And I'm afraid the fake news, they'll probably all turn off the cameras now. But uh, I say, could you just give just a little prelude? Because it's, I think it's going to be one of the biggest stories in a long time. Uh, even if they don't want to cover it, they'll be forced to cover it. So I'd like to ask Congressman Brian Stile to come up, please. Isn't it great to be at a Trump rally? Do you agree with me? President Trump is going to win Wisconsin in 30 days. When we drove over here, people were waving signs and holding up Trump signs. And we saw a lot of men and women of law enforcement are working to keep you safe, Mr. President. So to all the men and women of law enforcement here, Thank you for what you're doing to keep President Trump safe. Law enforcement's a lot about keeping us safe and enforcing the laws. And in this election, we want to make sure that people are following the laws. Things like photo ID and U.S. citizens are the only ones who should be able to vote in U.S. elections, don't you agree? As chairman of the Committee on House Administration, we began trying to figure out how all these things are operating. And in particular, where's all the funds coming into the liberal campaigns across the state of Wisconsin running TV ads against President Trump? We looked into Act Blue and we called him into the committee and we said, what processes are you using? And I said, you're using a CVV code. That's that little three or four digit number on the back of your credit card that you have to use when you buy almost anything online. And we found out they weren't requiring it if you want to make a donation on Act Blue. Then we started to dig further. and We started to find more and more things where they don't have the financial security in place that they need to. So we did a big review and we have transferred it over to a group of Republican attorney generals from across the country. And they're digging into this information, Mr. Trump. I think they're going to find a lot of answers very soon for you. So President Trump, thanks for what you're doing for this country. I think you're going to win not only Wisconsin, but the presidency in 30 days. And you see this crowd and everyone here. Thanks for all you're doing. God bless you. God bless you, President Trump. Also with us are members of Congress, great ones. Scott Fitzgerald, what a nice name that is. That's a good name. Where's Scott? I love that name, Scott. Must be a good writer. He's a great writer. Glenn Grothman. Thank you, Glenn. Been my friend for a long time. And a man who uh, is not from these parts any longer. He was from here. He grew up here, and he loves it so much. He's from a place called Texas. And he's one of the most popular politicians in Texas. He does a phenomenal job. And he has literally parked himself up here for the last couple of months, and for this last month in particular. But he's been here with his brother, his brother is uh, a phenomenal guy, and they are here for one reason, to make sure the election people get out to vote and to make sure it's honest. And the people of Texas know this, and they love this guy for what he's doing. He said, I can help. He's so popular. He won by a lot of votes. He has no problems at all. But he felt he was better off coming up, because if we win Wisconsin, we win the presidency. We win the presidency. We win the presidency. So I'd like to ask, and he's just a special guy. I mean, he loves this country so much. And, and you know, I can tell some guys come up, no, I love the country. Other guys come up, I love that country. You have to. And he's one of the, the latter. He's one of the guys that just loves it. And they love him. They love him so much in Texas. They love him here. But what he wanted to do, because he knows it so well, he's a part of Wisconsin. 
He wanted to be here to make sure that we win and to make sure that it's as honest as we can get it, because they're going to cheat. They cheat. That's all they want to do is cheat. And when you see this, it's the only way they're going to win. And we can't let that happen, and we can't let it happen again. We're going to have no country. So I'd like to ask a very special man and a friend of mine, Troy Nels, to come up with his brothers, Trevor, Tim, and Todd. Please come up. Mr. President, what an honor and a privilege is to be up here with my brothers. We are honored to be you, with you. Look at the thousands of people out here that love you. They're here. This is America. This is the heart and soul of America. The blue collar, the farmers, they're all here for you, sir. They're here for you because they love you and they think you're great. You know, I've been planning on this thing. I've been reaching to the team. I said, sir, we got to have a rally in Wisconsin. We can win Wisconsin. We keep looking and we keep looking. It's canceled, this and that. And then all of a sudden, I get a call last Tuesday. Hey, Congressman, uh, you think Sunday would work? What the hell kind of time are you giving us on Sunday to get up? But look at everybody's here. Everybody came. Everybody came because they know how important this election is. You know it. Mr. President, I can assure you this. The passion in this state, they love you. We have been up here for weeks going to county fairs. We see the passion. We see the love. We see the energy. And sir, I can assure you, everybody here is going to get their family, their friends. We are going to win Wisconsin. And Donald Trump is going to make America great again. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Well, I'd say I've never seen it before. And, and his district is so happy he's doing it. He explained it to them. What do you want to do? They love that he's doing it, and we really appreciate it. And we're leading Texas by a lot. We're leading Texas. So, so he said, I want to come up here because this is a big deal. Wisconsin's a big deal. Thank you. And he knows it so well. They grew up here. Thanks. Former U.S. Senator Bob Kasten. Bob, thank you very much. Bob. Nice to see you, Bob. Look good. And Dodge County Sheriff Dale Schmidt, who, by the way, is here with a group of Wisconsin sheriffs announcing that they are endorsing Trump. We love him. Come on up here. You're here for him, not me. 
Mr. President, I am proud to announce that all of these sheriffs are among a very small amount of sheriffs and law enforcement across our country that support you. I'd say 80 to 90 percent of law enforcement across this country are behind you, Mr. President. I have something very important I think you're going to want to hear. In Dodge County, in this 2024 election, there are zero drop boxes for the election. We're, our clerks are fantastic. We're going to make sure that we have the best, most secure election in Dodge County history. And one last thing, Mr. President, the last time I met you, I was with 200 sheriffs standing on the South Lawn, and you came out and you shook a bunch of sheriffs' hands, and you didn't quite get to me. Wait. So I did one thing that I knew would get his attention, and he'll do again here shortly as soon as I say it. I shouted, and he walked over to me afterwards. Best president ever! This is a great honor. These are great, great men, and uh, there's nobody that respects them more than this group. They do such a job, and generally law enforcement in our country, and oh, and woman. Come here. I, she, she's the best one up here, I think, right, Sharon? You bet. Thank you. That's good. Thank you very much. But I appreciate it so much, and the endorsement means a lot to me, and uh, anything you need, I'm here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sheriff. These are great people. Wow, what a group. Thank you, sheriffs. Thank you. And we have a lot of law enforcement here today, and I just want to say to all of the people in Wisconsin and law enforcement officers, all of them that are here today, we have so many, I will give you my total support, resources, power, protection, and respect. You are going to do your job because that's what you want to do. You're the most respected people in our country. I want you to know that sometimes you don't feel that way, but you are the most respected people. So I really think. And Sheriff, thank you very much. What a group. I was a little concerned, you know, there was a lot of beef up here, and I'm wondering about this. I was worried about this platform. I said, Do you think it's structurally okay? You know, I'm with the real estate. And I'm looking at this. It wasn't looking too good. I, I had to say, come on, let's go, get off. But these are great people. And uh, boy, they, they love your state. They love our country. That I can tell you. So thank you very much. It's a great endorsement. Thank you very much. So the sheriffs will be happy to know that we're going to end sanctuary cities. We will never defund our police. And we will make Wisconsin safe again. They're going to actually do that. They're going to make Wisconsin very safe, and they've kept it safe anyway. They only know how to keep it safe. That's all they want to do. I want to thank you. They're great. Kamala Harris is the worst vice president in the history of our country, a radical left Marxist who was rated far worse than anybody else in the Senate. And here are the facts. She wants to very simply, and they always go back to their original. You know, with the politics, if you go back to me, you'll see I don't think I've changed at all. 
a comment like 30 years ago when I wasn't in politics. I've only been doing this actually for like a short while. A senator came up to me, sir, I've been doing this for 30 years. I know what I'm doing. I said, yeah, I've been doing it for about eight. And we became president. He's a man that wanted to run for president, but it never worked out. And if you knew him like I did, it will never work out. But Kamala Harris wants open borders. She will deliver even more catastrophic inflation. She was an original creator, sheriff, of a defund the police movement. What do you think? Is she reformable? Is she reformable? Sheriff, is she reformable? She was in charge of defund the police. Do you think she's fully reformed? I don't think so. I don't think so. And anybody who wants to defund the police for even a week or for even a day is not worthy of being President of the United States. Kamala Harris vowed to abolish ICE. These are great people. These are great patriots. They're tough cookies, too. They would go into a pack of MS-13 gang members, and the fist would fly. I don't know. Somebody has to do that job. I don't see anybody up here. I have a couple of friends. I don't see them doing that particular job. They're good at other things, but not that. But these are great people, and uh, she wants to defund them. She wants to get rid of them. She wants to take ICE out. These are the people that remove the worst criminals, the worst gang members, the worst drug dealers from out of our country. Get them the hell out of here. And she wants to get rid of them. She wants mass amnesty and citizenship for all illegals. And she says that we must not utter the words illegal alien or radical Islamic terrorist. She lost more than, to me, statistically, this is the worst. In less than four years, she lost more than 325,000 migrant children that are now dead in sex slavery, in slavery, or just plain missing. As California Attorney General, she redefined child sex trafficking, assault with a deadly weapon, or rape of an unconscious person as totally nonviolent crimes. She praised the idea of a 70 to 80 percent tax rate. She thought that was very good. She pledged to abolish private health care for — some people want private health care. They have to pay for it, but they maybe don't want to wait in line for six months and force everyone into socialist, government-run health care, which is what you have to do. They wait online for months and months, and they take a routine or a minor illness, and they end up being terminally ill. And by the way, what we did for the military with that, you know, we gave choice, and we also did something that was uh, very important. We got rid of 9,000 sadists and bad people from our Veterans Administration, and we got rid of them. They hated our soldiers. They hated our heroes. We got rid of them and replaced them with people that love our people. That's what we want, love our country and love our people. The other thing we did, which is very important, is choice because our veterans were waiting in line. You know, we had a 92 percent approval rating with our vet. Now it's down into the 40s, and they're getting rid of a lot of the things we did for our vets. We had choice where if you had to wait more than a day for a doctor, a day and a half at the most, you go outside, you get a local doctor, we pay the bill, you get yourself fixed up. This never happened before with our vets, and it was unbelievable. And slowly but surely, they're going to dismantle that. They've already started dismantling that. It was one of the best things I was most proud of. And we're going to get it back very fast, you vets. We're going to get it back very fast. Now, people would be waiting in line for, for months. They'd say, you have to come back in three and a half months, and uh, whatever the condition. Can you imagine that where you're told you can't even see a doctor for three and a half, four months, longer than that? And you know, the uh, VA has some great doctors, but the management of getting to see them was very peculiar. So. Uh, we're going to take care of that. But we did something. They've been trying to get that for 58 years, and I got it done, totally done. And nothing worked better. And again, 92 percent approval rating. It was never even — it was rarely in the 40s. So I was very proud of it. And we'll redo it again. We'll redo it fast. I know exactly what to do, and we're going to redo it. We're going to take care of our veterans, and I think everybody wants that. And as people have been hearing and not believing, but it's true, 
She even endorsed free sex changes for illegal aliens in detention at taxpayer expense. So if you're an illegal alien and you're in detention and you decide that you would like to go from a man to a woman, we give you an operation. You know, not only is the concept bad, but it's an unbelievably expensive procedure. And we're supposed to pay for it. This is what she wants, and she wants to do it. And she hasn't, she hasn't declined that yet. You know, it's hard for them to decline everything. So normally, if somebody changes one policy, they're out of business, right, Troy? She's changed 15 policies from fracking to everything to that. And uh, nobody believes her. And as soon as, if she ever won, as soon as that would happen, you're going to be uh, a whole different country. You will see things. And I don't even believe she's calling the shots. There are some very bad and vicious people that surround her that call the shots. She's just a vehicle. Just like Biden was a vehicle, he has no idea what the hell he's doing. And you saw that. You saw that. Think of it. He has no idea. He couldn't answer any questions. And she can't do anything. She can't do anything. She doesn't want to talk because she is just a vehicle for very bad people that surround her. Two days ago, Joe Biden shuffled into the White House press room and made the most powerful case against Kamala Harris because she's trying to disassociate herself from crooked Joe Biden. What do you like better, crooked Joe or sleepy Joe? Depends. When he's sleeping on the beach, I like Sleepy Joe. When he's in the White House, I like Crooked Joe because he's the most crooked president we've ever had. I think, but right now I think Sleepy because they took the presidency away from him. They had a coup. They staged a minor coup, if you haven't heard. But she is trying to disassociate. She doesn't even know who the hell he is anymore. She doesn't mention his name. She doesn't mention how bad inflation was, how bad the 325,000 children that we just mentioned. All of these things are so bad how bad the economy is, how bad the border is. To me, again, the border, the border, it's over the border. You know, I won in 2016 because of the border. I did a phenomenal job. Is that right, Troy? You were a beneficiary in Texas, and I did such a great job. And then in 2020, when I ran, got more votes and everything. But I wanted to talk about the border. My people said, sir, nobody wants to talk about the border anymore. You fixed it. I said, that's why I want to talk about it. I couldn't talk about it. I said, I want to talk. People weren't interested in it. But that border in 2016 was nothing compared to what you have today. What you have today is a sick group of people that are letting these really bad, dangerous people into our country. And we're not going to let that. We're going to close that up on day one. My first order is going to be close the border. And they could do that, too. They could do that, too. You know, Biden could do that right now. He could get up and say, close the border, and they'd do it, because the president has that power. He doesn't need bills. They keep talking about bills. The bill they're talking about was the stupidest bill I've ever seen. But they don't need bills. All the president has to do is say, close the border, and he has refused to do it. Biden said that he and Kamala were, quote, singing from the same song sheet she helped pass all the laws, every single one of them. She was a major player in everything we did. Now, he went up into the White House press secretary's lectern, and he said this stuff. And they were dying. <laughs> they were saying, oh, my God, it's coming down. And because, you know what? He got tired of hearing that she had nothing to do with anything. And he knew it was a lie. So he couldn't take it any longer. And he went up and made a fool out of himself, but you'd expect that. But he said these, this was one hell of a press, this was the worst press conference. They're screaming at him. He didn't know what the hell was happening. But the reason he went up there was to make that statement that she knew everything. She could not disassociate herself. She approved everything. She was the vote in the Senate as the vice president for many of these bills. So a vote for Kamala is a vote for four more years of crooked Joe Biden. It's a disaster. It's a disaster for our country, and it'll never be this way. A vote for Trump is a vote for change, and it's a vote for saving our country. It's unbelievable. So if Kamala just in sort of closing up, if Kamala enacts her agenda, she'll destroy America. Our agenda will make America safer and wealthier than ever before. 
We will have, remember this, something that I think is very important for different people. We will have no tax on tips. Now, that doesn't help the sheriff so much. <laughs> That's not going to help you guys. They never got a tip, I guarantee you that. But that helps a lot of people. That has been very — but no tax on tips. Then she copied us, right? Two months later, she said, I've got a major announcement. There will be no tax. But she never filed. She never even said it again after that. No, but the difference is we get it done. You know, they talked about uh, education, and they talked about the uh, debt for students, student debt. And they failed on it. They failed on everything. The student debt, a lot of people didn't like it. But regardless, they said it. They kept saying it, saying it, saying it. They kept losing, losing, losing. And now it's a dead deal. It would be that way with these. No tax on tips. Ready? No tax on overtime. If you work overtime, no tax. And you have a lot of overtime people here. You have a lot of people that work a lot of overtime. I used to hate to pay overtime, Troy. Oh, I used to hate to pay overtime. I did everything I could to get out of it. But you know what? It's a big deal. And I actually think that's going to be a benefit to our economy, an overall benefit. So it's no tax on tips, no tax on overtime. And are there any seniors in this particular place? I refuse to raise my hand. Okay, I'll raise. No tax. And this is big because you've been destroyed with your fixed incomes, you've been destroyed by inflation. No tax on Social Security for our seniors. No tax for our seniors. That's a big one. And I'll get them done fast. I'll get them done fast. We've got people already working on them. We'll get them all done fast. Well, working Americans catch up. We're going to put a temporary cap on the credit card interest rates. Look, Right now, people are paying 24 percent. They're getting killed. We have people with electricity and their bills that are behind. 26 percent of our country is behind on paying their electric bills. We can't let them pay 22, 24, 26 percent interest. He just said 30. Are you paying 30, sir? Let me, let me see who you are. He's dealing with Alphonse Capone as his lender, right? Yeah, one of those nice lenders. So we're putting a cap of 10 percent, temporary cap, until we get past this terrible period that we're living in, right? I can do that quickly. We will become energy independent and then energy dominant like no country has ever seen before, because my second order, number one, close the border. We're going to get them out of here. Close the border. What's number two? Drill, baby, drill. We will open Anwar in Alaska, the largest drilling site, perhaps, in the entire world. Can you imagine? Ronald Reagan couldn't get it. Nobody could get it. They've been trying for years and decades, and nobody could get it. I got it done. And they were all set to take — this is a site that would supply all of Asia. We would make a fortune, would pay down our debt. And Biden comes in, and he terminates it. Nobody could get it done. Ronald Reagan, it was his number one thing he wanted to get done. And it's much tougher to get it done today than it was many years ago, I can tell you that. They use the environment. They use anything they can use. But we're going to tap the liquid gold. Look, we have more liquid gold under our feet than any other country in the world. We're going to start using our liquid gold instead of letting it sit there as we buy tar from Venezuela and other places. And we will always protect your Social Security and your Medicare. We're not going to have any cuts. And I'll tell you, we're never raising the age. She's going to raise the age on Social Security by five years. We're not raising the age on Social Security. And we didn't. For four years, we proved it. They're going to raise it because they're letting so many people on that shouldn't be there. I will settle the war in Ukraine. I will end the chaos in the Middle East, and I will prevent World War III. I'm going to prevent. Thank you. Thank you very much. And days ago, I was honored to receive the endorsement of many, many people over, but far over, 300 national security officials. They 
worked with me. The whole group got together. They endorsed me like they've never endorsed anybody before. Even some of the people that you sort of see were against me. They were in that list. They endorsed me. And uh, some of them got a lot of money for a book. You know, they said, no, Trump is great. Trump is great. Well, we're going to pay you $2 million for a book. Well, he was OK. You know, you got to say bad. We're not giving you any money unless you say bad. That's what happens, but that's OK. But over 300, did you know that, Troy? The biggest guys in the country, over 300 people that worked with us endorsed me, which is a record, and I'm very proud of it. Thank you very much. We call that peace through strength, and they believed in it, too. Peace through th Peace through strength. I will support universal school choice. Very important. We will let federal education dollars follow the child instead of a propping up of a woke federal bureaucracy. And I will defend, I can't even believe I have to say this, I will defend parental rights. Can you believe it? Who would believe you had to say that? Can you imagine 10 years ago having to say that? You'd be embarrassed to have to say it, but we will protect the parents. I won't investigate parents at schools and school boards. These school boards have dominated this administration. I've never seen anything like it. The parents are arrested. The FBI goes after them. We will protect parents. We will protect parental rights. It's very, very important. I'm going to be listening to the parents. I'm listening to the parents. We will rebuild our cities, including Washington, D.C., making them safe, clean, and beautiful again, and especially safe because of people like that. And we will keep the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency. It's under tremendous threat. Somebody said, well, how are you going to do that? You know, one of these stupid people that ask questions. I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. If a country wants to leave us and they want to not just consider us the world's currency, we have to be careful with it, too. We have to cherish it and take care of it. But it's very important. It would be like losing a war. If somebody says from a country, we're going to pull out of the reserve currency, I will say the following. That's OK. But I'm going to charge you a 200 percent tariff on all the business you do in the United States of America, and it goes into effect today, and they will look at me and they will say, Sir, uh, we have decided to stay in the reserve currency, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You know, uh, Troy can tell you this. There are some people that say, We love Trump's policy, but we don't like and I say, no, no, I, because I actually think I'm a nice person. I, want, I just, all I want to do is save our country. OK, that's So I just want to say that. And then a couple of our senators said, here's the problem. You like his policy. But his policy only works with him. Because like that, what I just told you, how many people would say to the head of a country that when Macron, nice guy, when he, Emmanuel from France, he said he's going to tax American companies at a very high rate, higher than other companies. And I said to Mnuchin and some people, don't let him do it. Go tell him you're not going to do it. And if he does it, it's going to have a problem. They went and they came back and they said, sir, we haven't been successful. I said, go do it again, and after that, I'll take it. And they did it again, and they were unsuccessful. They came to me. They said, no, he's going to tax American companies. Now, this is France. They're going to tax American companies at a very high rate. Very few others, but American companies. And I said, uh, get him on the phone. I got him on the phone. Emmanuel, how are you? Oh, Donald, Donald, I am fine. Thank you so much. I said, Emmanuel, I understand that you're going to put a very big tax on American companies. Now, as your president, I have to protect American companies. I can't let that happen. And other companies and other countries aren't going to be taxed. Like, hell, that's going to happen. So I said, I understand that's going to happen, Emmanuel. Yes, Donald, it is already passed by, essentially, their legislature. I said, no. I said, no, Emmanuel, you're not going to do that. Yes, Donald, it's too late. I'm so sorry, President. I'm so sorry. I said, it's not too late. 
not too late. Because if you do that, I'm going to put a 100 percent tariff on every bottle of wine and every bottle of champagne that you send into the United States of America. 100 percent tariff. And he said, that's not fair. That's not fair. I said, listen, it's not fair that you're taxing our companies at more than other countries' companies. So to me, it's very fair. He said, uh, I told him, and I was very late. I think I was probably working on the, one of the hoaxes or something that was, you know, keeps you busy. You know, these, the Democrat scams and hoaxes. I said, Emmanuel, I don't have time. I'm giving you five minutes to call me, if you will. Please call me back within five minutes. Let me know what, because I'm ready to sign this tax. Uh, I will call back. He called back in about two minutes. He said, Donald, I have decided that uh, we will not charge this tax on American companies. Thank you, Emmanuel, very much. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> I, did, I did so much of that. I kept, I kept us out of wars. Remember, with Trump, you had no wars. Remember crazy Hillary? She said, look at him. Look at him. Look at his attitude. He's going to cause wars. And I said, no, my attitude is going to keep us out of wars. And I was right. Except, except I finished off ISIS, right? We finished off ISIS. 100% of the ISIS caliphate was going to take five years. I did it in one month. It was done. No wars. First time in 81 years. I started no wars. But this is how we will end the era of inflation and mayhem and misery under Kamala and crooked Joe. He's crooked as a $4 bill. I used to say a $2 bill, but I see $2 bills around, so I can't say that. And unleash safety, prosperity, and peace for Americans of every race, religion, color, and creed, every one of them. Together, we will deliver low taxes, low regulations, low energy costs, low interest rates, and low inflation so that everyone can afford groceries, a nice car, and a home, the basics. We will stop the invasion. We will end migrant crime. We will strengthen our military. We will build a missile defense shield around our country. Much of it will be made in Wisconsin, by the way. We will keep critical race theory and transgender insanity the hell out of our schools. It's God. And we will keep men out of women's sports. We will defend the Second Amendment, protect religious liberty, restore free speech, and we will, once and for all, secure our elections. Everyone will prosper, every family will thrive, and every day will be filled with opportunity and hope, and especially for the people of Wisconsin. You're going to be happy. You're going to be happy. But for that to happen, we must defeat Kamala Harris, and we must stop her country-destroying radical left agenda once and for all. We have to knock it. We want a landslide that's too big to rig. We want a too big to rig. And just finally, after all we have been through together, we stand on the verge of the four greatest years of the history of our country. I believe they're going to be the four greatest years, not just a fixing up, it's going to be a going forward. With your help from now until Election Day, 30 days, we will redeem America's promise. We will put America first, and we will take back the nation that we love. <laughs> November 5th will be the most important day in the history of our country, and together we will make America powerful again. Powerful. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America healthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make 
America great again. Thank you. Thank you, Wisconsin.